Good afternoon, and welcome to St. James Catholic Church. To our guests with us, we are honored by your presence and appreciate your participation along with us in the Mass. Please stand now and join in singing our entrance hymn, um, number 736 in the hymnal, The Church is One Foundation, number 736. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the Lord be with you. Amen. Welcome to our celebration of this 27th Sunday in Ordinary Time. Made as we are in the image and likeness of God, this evening we turn to our Creator and ask for the grace we need to become the men and women we were created to be. For the times in which we have fallen short of God's will for us, let us begin our celebration by acknowledging our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you are mighty God and Prince of Peace. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you are the Son of God and Son of Mary. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the Word made flesh and splendor of the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Holy 
Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, who in the abundance of your kindness surpass the merits and the desires of those who entreat you, pour out your mercy upon us to pardon what conscience dreads and to give what prayer does not dare to ask. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Thank you. A reading from the book of Genesis. The Lord God said, It is not good for the man to be alone. I will make a suitable partner for him. So the Lord God formed out of the ground various wild animals and various birds of the air, and he brought them to the man to see what he would call them. Whatever the man called each of them would be its name. The man gave names to all the cattle, all the birds of the air, and all wild animals. But none proved to be a suitable partner for the man. So the Lord God cast a deep sleep on the man. And while he was asleep, he took out one of his ribs and closed up its place with flesh. The Lord God then built up into a woman the rib that he had taken from the man. When he brought her to the man, the man said, this one at last is bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh. This one shall be called woman, for out of her man this one has been taken. That is why a man leaves his father and his mother, and clings to his wife, and the two of them become one flesh. The word of the Lord. and protect us all the days of our lives. May the Lord bless and protect us all the days of our lives. Blessed are you who fear the Lord, who walk in his ways, for you shall eat the fruit of your work, blessed shall you be and favored. May the Lord bless and protect us all the days of our lives. Your wife shall be like a fruitful vine in the recesses of your home, your children like olive plants around your table. May the Lord bless and protect us all the days of our lives. Behold, thus is the man blessed who fears
fears the Lord. The Lord bless you from Zion. May you see the prosperity of Jerusalem all the days of your life. May the Lord bless and protect us all the days of our lives. May you see your children's children. Peace be upon Israel. May the Lord bless and protect us all the days of our lives. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Brothers and sisters, he, for a little while, was made lower than, than the angels, that by the grace of God he might taste death for everyone. For it was fitting that he, for whom and through whom all things exist, in bringing many children to glory, should make the leader to their salvation perfect through suffering. He who consecrates and those who are being consecrated all have one origin. Therefore, he is not ashamed to call them brothers. The word of the Lord. The Pharisees approached Jesus and asked, Is it lawful for a husband to divorce his wife? They were testing him. He said to them in reply, What did Moses command you? They replied, Moses permitted a husband to write a bill of divorce and dismiss her. But Jesus told them, Because of the hardness of your heart, he wrote you this commandment. But from the beginning of creation, God made them male and female, and for this reason, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and the two become one flesh. So they are no longer two but one flesh. Therefore, what God has joined together, no man, no human being must separate. In the house, the disciples again questioned Jesus about this. He said to them, Whoever divorces his wife and marries another commits adultery against her. And if she divorces her husband and marries another, she commits adultery. And the people were bringing children to him that he might touch them, but the disciples rebuked them. When Jesus saw this, he became indignant and said to them, Let the children come to me. Do not prevent them, for the kingdom of God belongs to such as these. 
Amen, I say to you, whoever does not accept the kingdom of God like a child will not enter it. Then he embraced them and blessed them and placed his hands on them. The Gospel of the Lord. Jesus Christ. October the 2nd is the feast day of the guardian angels. It's a neat feast in the life of the church. We don't celebrate it this evening because of the precedence of the Sunday celebration, but I'd like to begin and end this evening by saying a little bit about the guardian angels. Play a deeply committed role in our lives. We can go easily a year without thinking of them, and then when we remember them on October 2nd, but they deserve a little bit more than that. I came across the other day, earlier this week, a list of seven services guardian angels provide to humanity. So I just want to walk through them quickly with you. You don't have to remember at all, all of these. The quiz only asks for three, so you can pick out what you're going to remember. Seven contributions they make to us. They preserve us from many unknown dangers to soul and body. This makes sense. They defend us against the temptations of the evil spirits. We all need help there. They inspire us with holy thoughts and prompt us to deeds of virtue and divine service. It's a great contribution. They warn us of spiritual dangers and admonish us when we have sinned. It's a painful reality, but we need kick in the pants from time to time. They unite us with prayer, in prayer, and offer our prayers to God. Very beautiful. They defend us at the hour of death against the last attacks of the spiritual foes. And this is the last one. They console the souls languishing in purgatory and then conduct them to heaven when their faults have been fully expiated. The Catechism has a beautiful line about angels. The Catechism of the Catholic Church, paragraph 336 says, From its beginning until death, human life is surrounded by their watchful care and intercession. Beside each believer stands an angel as protector and shepherd, leading him to life, leading him to life. It's appropriate to think of the, arc, the guardian angels this weekend because October is Respect Life Month. You would have seen the banner if you entered through the front entrance of church. Particularly this first weekend of October, we honor Respect Life Month. The guardian angels, you think of these seven things they do for us, it tells us of their great respect for human life. And we could even think to ourselves, how different would the world be if we respected life as much as the angels did? If we cared for human life as much as these angels are caring for it every day, constantly for us. The first time an angel is mentioned in the Bible is in Genesis chapter 3. Adam and Eve have been banished from Eden. And it says there that seraphim are stationed to guard the entrance to the Garden of Eden and the Tree of Life. It's a reminder to us that one of the consequences of the fall and original sin is that we don't quite value life as much as we should. It's one of the consequences of sin that we can be outright hostile towards the gift of life in ourselves and other people and in our world. Came across a statistic the other day about our state of Kentucky It listed causes of death. Number one, cancer. Two is heart disease. The third is abortion. The third leading cause of death in our state. Tells us about the hostility as human beings we can have towards life, even the most vulnerable. Think of how contrary that statistic is to Christ saying in the gospel of children, the kingdom of heaven belongs to such as these. The gospel reading this weekend references Genesis, first reading itself. Christ says from the beginning, when the Pharisees question him about marriage and divorce, his first words are from the beginning. He refers to Genesis. This is how Genesis begins, in the beginning. The Hebrew word for Genesis, Bereshit, means in the beginning. In the beginning, when God created the heaven and the earth, the earth was a formless wasteland. Darkness covered the abyss, then a mighty wind swept over the waters, and God said, let there be light. Christ says, from the beginning. It's very enlightening. Many questions in life that we have 
could really readily be addressed by going back to the beginning. If you look at these early chapters of Genesis, one and two relate these two different creation accounts. They have some striking answers for us as human beings about why we're created, why God creates us, how he creates us, just as importantly, what God creates us for in life, where we will find our fulfillment as human beings. It's a great place to turn for some of these answers that we, questions we ask in life from the beginning, very enlightening that Christ begins his answer in this way. If you look at this chapter two, it's kind of striking. It's a little bit humorous in a way that almost immediately after Adam is created, he has an identity crisis. It's kind of striking. God created him, so surely God would know how Adam's life would unfold. But it also means that the creator is very willing to help the creature with divine assistance. And that's what happens. Immediately, God intervenes. He takes action to restore Adam to a a fuller sense of life itself. It's a bit humorous too in a way. Adam doesn't even know what he's looking for. He just knows he's not satisfied in the first reading today. It's kind of like the word on the tip of the tongue. This happens to us from time to time. We can't recall the word we're looking for. Oftentimes, the wrong word comes to us. And then we say, no, that's not it. We don't know what the word is. We just know what it's not until we figure out the word we're looking for. And we think, ah, this is it. And that's exactly what Adam says. This one at last is bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh. It's the word on the tip of his mouth. He doesn't know what it is. But through divine assistance, God intervenes, provides this great gift in the first reading. Oftentimes in the Hebrew scriptures, names are particularly significant. They have like a double meaning. Beneath the surface of the name, there's a greater understanding that gives us a sense of meaning. And this is the case with Adam and Eve. Adam's name comes from a Hebrew word that means earth because God fashions Adam literally from the clay of the earth. That's how he accounts for his life. Eve comes from a Hebrew word that means life. In Genesis chapter 4, she's described as the mother of all living. These two names are very unique. They're different from one another, earth and life, Adam and Eve. They're unique, but they also express a beautiful complementarity. They allow these two creatures, they speak to the way in which God has crafted them and created them to be cooperators with the ongoing work of creation. Creation doesn't end At a simple point in time, God's creation is still ongoing. It's part of the dignity of God's creatures made in his image and likeness, human beings, that they can take up as male and female God's work of creation. It's a beautiful role that the gospel reminds us of in today's first reading from Genesis chapter 2. A couple years ago, I read a great book called Why Gender Matters. It was written by a medical doctor and a psychologist. The backdrop for the book is that when he was doing his doctoral work in the 80s in both of these fields, psychology and medicine, there was a prevailing logic that gender is basically neutral. People are basically the same. If you treat kids, irrespective of gender, the same, it's all going to work out in the end. They'll basically become who they're created to be. Just take gender out of the equation. But all the evidence suggests that this has been of terrible consequence for humanity. So what this writer does in his book, Why Gender Matters, he presents all the scientific data that says men and women, male and female, boys and girls, they perceive the world differently. This is sometimes the cause of great frustration between men and women, male and female, boys and girls. We perceive the world just a little bit differently. We grow in a unique way from one another. We learn even, some of the data suggests that we learn kind of in a unique way from one another. It's a very helpful reminder to us that somehow gender is part of God's great gift towards creation. And without it, something grave is lacking. Our respect for human life is somehow diminished. There was a great theologian, one of my personal heroes, a French Jesuit who was a soldier in the First World War. And then in the Second World War, he was in hiding for a period of time because he had spoken out against the Nazi party. 
he has this little formula that spoke against some of the ideologies in the world that tried to erase God from civilization. He said in one of his writings, where there's no God, there's no humanity either. There was a prevailing thought in some quarters of the world that said, God is keeping humanity from reaching its full potential. So if you erase God from consciousness, from the world itself, humanity will reach its full potential and become godlike. It's not a rare thought. This would have been a prevailing thought in a number of civilizations in our world. His point is very powerful. There is no God, there's no humanity. If you erase God from the human consciousness, not only does humanity not become God, but humanity loses its humanity. There's no humanity left where there is no God. We can think along similar lines in a way when it comes to male and female gender. Where there's no gender, if you take it away from humanity altogether, there's no humanity. It's partly how God made us. Sometimes there's a thought in our world that gender is kind of a spectrum. You just land at a particular spot on it. But that does grave violence to humanity. God made them male and female, as Christ says in the gospel. It's a profound truth about who we are. And without it, we lose something too important about our humanity to continue in a meaningful way. I want to end with a line from St. Bernard of Clairvaux. I talked at the beginning about the guardian angels, what they do for us. He's one of the great saints of our tradition, and he gives us an insight into our obligation to the guardian angels. If they're going to provide such care for us, the least we can do is offer a few things toward them. So he lists three, three things we should do for the guardian angels. He says, we owe our guardian angels profound respect for their presence, gratitude for all the benefits they confer upon us, and confidence in their protection. Respect, gratitude, and confidence we owe to the guardian angels. Because it's Respect Life Weekend, St. James has a great Respect Life Committee. We have these same obligations or duties, in a sense, toward life, respect for the gift of life. Mother Teresa calls it the greatest gift God has bestowed on human beings. Gratitude that God has bestowed it, because you can't say ultimately that we deserve it or that God was obligated to give us the, the gift of life, but also confidence. We owe God, just like we owe the archangels confidence, confidence that this human life will find its fulfillment with God's help in eternal life. Together, let us profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made for us men and for our salvation. He came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was a carnal of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. It will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead the life of the world to come. Amen. As his faithful children, let us turn to God in prayer and our, present our petitions before him.
for church leaders. May the Holy Spirit fortify them in their witness to the gospel of life. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For civic leaders, may God provide them the wisdom to protect life from conception to natural death. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick, may they experience the healing touch of Jesus, the divine physician. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For parishioners who may struggle emotionally, financially, or physically, may the Lord be their comfort. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For an increase in vocation to the priesthood, diaconate, and religious life, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We remember in our prayers Laura Welk for whom this Mass is offered. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the souls of the faithfully departed, may God welcome them to his eternal peace. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Almighty and eternal God, in your infinite mercy, please hear our prayers. We ask them through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Our offertory hymn is number 985, Love Has Brought Us Here Together, 985. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Amen. 
Accept, O Lord, we pray, the sacrifices instituted by your commands, and through the sacred mysteries which we celebrate with dutiful service, graciously complete the sanctifying work by which you are pleased to redeem us, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For through his paschal mystery he accomplished the marvelous deed by which he has freed us from the yoke of sin and death, summoning us to the glory of being now called a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for your own possession, to proclaim everywhere your mighty works, for you have called us out of darkness into your own wonderful light. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, 
with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, James and all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Joseph, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days. By the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let's offer each other a sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb.
The Lord is good to those who hope in Him, to the soul that seeks Him. Bless the Lord, my soul, all my being, bless His holy name. Bless the Lord, my soul, and do not forget all His gifts. The Lord is good to those who hope in Him, to the soul that seeks Him, who pardons all your sins and heals all your ills, who redeems your life from the pit and crowns you with mercy and compassion. The Lord is good to those who hope in Him, to the soul that seeks Him. Our communion hymn is number 937, Draw Us in the Spirit's Tether, 937.
Let us pray. Grant us, Almighty God, that we may be refreshed and nourished by the sacrament which we have received, so as to be transformed into what we consume through Christ our Lord. Thank you. Members of the St. James Respect Life Committee are collecting signatures for the annual pro-life ad in the newspaper. A $5 donation for the ad is suggested but not required. Thank you for supporting the right to life for the unborn, and thanks to all those who assist in that ministry. The St. James Parish will host an Extraordinary Minister of Holy Communion update training in two Tuesdays on October the 12th at 7 p.m. You don't have to register. Just come to the church for that update training if you're interested. There are details in the bulletin also about the St. James Catholic Church Endowment. This fund was established by a donor with the intention of providing a source of income for our parish church. If you're interested in supporting the endowment with a gift, you can contact the Central Kentucky Community Foundation or Jennifer Moran. Details are in the bulletin, as I mentioned. Also, uh, Father Lawrence Sezike, the priest from Nigeria, was here for three weeks. He left on Tuesday. He got off safely, so he had a good visit and wanted to share his thanksgiving to the people of St. James for hospitality during this time here. So thank you for that. It's good to be with each of you this evening. Thank you for your presence as we worship God. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Masses and to go in peace to love and serve the Lord.